Hey, this is Lynn. I'm here today to spend a little bit of time, just a little, going over some of my labs again. I was viewing last Saturday the 24-hour event that was hosted by Homestead Howe, and it was um, to earn raise money for their documentary on the carnivore diet and there were some amazing guests that were on there and there was some somebody on there 24 7 and there was a lot of interviews there was doctors and there was a lot of testimonials it was great if you haven't gone and watched it go check it out on homestead house website um the it, it also jt also has it on the poco moonshine family i think he has it split into two but anyways i was really looking forward to seeing dr ovadia because he is a cardiologist cardiac you know cardiac surgeon and i had an opportunity to actually ask him the question about my apo lipoprotein b because i was a little bit concerned i wasn't sure if i should be concerned but I was able to post a question and he answered it and he gave me a very thorough answer. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share that answer with you and then we'll dig in a little bit. But um, just to get a little bit of context with the apolipoprotein B, it's supposed to be a little bit better of an indicator of cardiac risk. Um, but he gives some context to that too. But my previous lab for the ApoB, we'll call it that for short, was 106. And that was um, October 19th of 2022. So a little less than a year ago, it was 106. And then when I got it retested on um, September 8th of this year, 2023, it had gone up to 122. Not a huge jump, but just for some context, its desirable level is under 90. So it was not under 90 before. It was 106. Borderline is 90 to 99. High is 100 to 130. So it was in the high, lower end on the high of the high range. And now it's a little closer to the upper end of the high range. Very high is over 130. So that gives you a little bit of context of where things are. Yeah, it did go up. So let's see what Dr. Ovadia has to say. Dr. Ovadia, happy to see you here. Would you be concerned to see apoloprotein B increasing after four months on strict carnivore? Thanks. Yeah, so uh, apolipoprotein B, ApoB as it's called, um, is another way of measuring LDL cholesterol. Now, ApoB does a little better job of measuring this because it also measures those VLDL particles that we were talking about earlier that are concerning, something called IDL particles as well. Uh, so um, it gives us a little bit better of a picture, but it still suffers from the same issue as uh, just measuring LDL cholesterol in that it's still just telling you the amount of cholesterol. And it's not really telling you, you know, which type of cholesterol particles are causing that ApoB to be elevated. So you could have an elevated ApoB because you have a lot of the large fluffy particles, and that's not going to be a concerning situation. Or you can have an elevated ApoB because you have a lot of the VLDL and small dense LDL particles, uh, and that is a concerning situation. So I still think we need to go further, um, ask for, uh, it's called an NMR test, or it's going to be called a lipoprotein fractionation test. And this is the test that's going to show you which type of particles you actually have, uh, so you know whether or not you need to be concerned. Now, the broader question about cholesterol levels, LDL cholesterol levels going up on a carnivore diet. Uh, understand that this is variable. Some people it does, others it doesn't. Um, it may be a temporary thing. A lot of people, you know, when they first go on the carnivore diet, their LDL might go up uh, and then it comes down with time. Uh, there seems to be some influence of, uh, you know, uh, if you're actively losing weight, um, if you're a uh, kind of lean mass hyper responder, as, as uh, Dave Feldman and others have uh, termed, uh, you know, if you're leaner, 
uh, and you're using these cholesterol particles to sort of traffic energy in your bloodstream. These are some of the reasons that they go up. Uh, but ultimately, you know, I want us to focus more on quality of cholesterol as opposed to amount of cholesterol and then understand that the primary thing that's going to influence the quality of your cholesterol is insulin resistance, is metabolic health. So this is what we need to be focused on ultimately. Looks like I pronounced his name wrong. Sorry, Dr. Avadia. Okay, so he talked about insulin resistance and he talked about the very low density lipoprotein as two factors when it comes to taking a look at the cholesterol and the significance of it. He did talk about taking that fractionated, you know, cholesterol test to see like the quality of the particles. And I'm going to talk to my doctor about that. But for the moment, let's just take a look at my, the details of my lipid panel, because I was focused so much on that LDL going up that I really wasn't paying too close attention to the other things. I mean, I saw them, but I didn't really see them with the eyes that I'm looking at them now. Um, so my cholesterol threshold is 200. It was 192 before it went up to 221. Not worried about that. Triglycerides have always been good. They should be under 149. Previously last October when I had them done, they were 140. So a little bit on the, you know, close to that limit. They went down to 92. So that's really good. My HDL should be above 39. Previously it was 40. Now it's 42. So it is on the low end, but it went up by two points. Um, my VLDL has been within normal range as well. Normal is 5 to 40. Last year it was 25. It went down to 16. So those are those little dense particles that you don't want to have. He said, he actually said that if he saw that going up, the VLDL going up, there might be some cause of concern. First cause for concern. So mine went down. That's very reassuring for me. Glad to see that. Um, and then of course my LDL should be under 99. It was previously 127. So a little bit high and it's now 163. So still not bad. I mean, there's people who have their LDLs way higher than mine. So I'm not super, super concerned about that. Okay. Sorry, how does the brain freeze? It's not the greatest brain day for me. So sorry if I had a little bit of a brain freeze there. Okay. Um, so the real thing is insulin resistance. You know, you want to take, get, take that other test, find out, you know, the quality of the protein. I think we've got some indicators in just looking at the labs, the deep, my, my lipid panel, that the quality of the protein is improving since the VLDL has gone down, not up. Um, but when it comes to insulin resistance, the triglyceride to HDL ratio is a factor. And so I don't know if it was him or Dr. Chafee who said that they look at about 1.5 as a threshold for insulin resistance. Now I've seen studies that have gone higher than that, like 1.5, 1, or sorry, 2.5, 2.7. Um, but they were done in other countries, which is fine, but genetically we do, we have we do kind of have some differences. So I'm just going to go with what, with the 1.5. I would much rather err on the side of being stricter with my requirements for my metabolic health rather than just pick the biggest number I can find and, you know, use that number and go, yay, I'm under that number. So therefore I must be healthy. That's not the approach that I want to take. I want to take the most conservative approach. So let's just pick 1.5 as the indicator for insulin resistance. Now this isn't, you know, the only thing that goes into determining insulin resistance. I haven't got my insulin levels checked. So we're going to talk to my doc and see if he wants to do that. But for now, I'm going to go with the information that I have, which is the triglyceride over HDL ratio. So back in October last year, it was 3.5, which is high. 
and that number went down to 2.2. So that means I'm becoming less insulin resistant, which is fantastic news. Based on the 1.5, I have a ways to go before I actually meet these doctors' criteria for not being insulin resistant. But I have a ways to go with losing weight. My beta, my metabolic health has a ways to go to, to improve. But overall, I'm very happy to see my VLDL has gone down. My triglyceride to HDL ratio has gone down. So everything is trending in the right direction. So I'm very happy to see to 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 know that. And I really appreciate Dr. Avadia going into such good detail and with his opinion, his feedback on the labs. Now my hemoglobin A1C um, went down, which is great. So I was pre-diabetic before, and now I'm not. So it's down to 5.5. I did read somewhere that any hemoglobin A1C above 5.4 is an indicator of insulin resistance. Mine's 5.5. But again, it's heading in the right direction. So just one point above. Um, so all is good. And um, I've had something interesting over the past week. Um, I feel like my cells are kind of waking up, which is weird. Like I heard... I've heard people on the carnivore diet talk about you will get to the point where you feel like your body wants to move. Your muscles have this excess energy in them and want to move. Now, I'm not saying I experience that every day, but I have experienced that. And that's something different for me. Along with that, I've also experienced a need for more food. I was eating one meal a day and a snack previously and I feel like I need more to eat. So I usually have my buttered coffee in the morning and then I wasn't really eating anything until maybe er early evening, late afternoon, and I'd have some dinner. But I have found that I need to have lunch and dinner. So, um, and I before, I, before I figured that out, I was just feeling like I was kind of dragging a little bit and feeling like I was a little weak. As soon as I added that extra meal, Everything went, was great. I felt like I was getting properly fueled. And uh, so maybe my little mitochondria are waking up. That'd be really good because I need that energy for sure. Anyways, that's my report for today. Hope everyone's having an absolutely wonderful day.